Hello and welcome to this new special episode of Continuum Gaming and Company News episode 270, as you already can see here, of Continuum Gaming. And today we are going to have something very special because I'm looking at a different smartphone uh, operation system and it's not going to be iOS or Android or something, but it's going to be Sailfish OS. Selfish OS is a Linux-based uh, smartphone OS, like for instance Ubuntu Touch is one too, I think uh, to a Tyson by Samsung is one too. But the very interesting part about this smartphone OS is that it can run Android apps in a sandbox. That means that Android is run not really as a whole, but with a couple of different libraries and stuff like that, in its own container, but can't access any kind of information from your main smartphone OS. So it's a very shut off system and you maintain the full control of everything you want to do there. And that's a big difference for, for instance, compared to Android smartphones on the market or of course iOS smartphones are a different kind of story there but in the end if you want it open source because Selfish OS is an open source system at least most of it is the GUI itself isn't but everything else is um, is more or less privacy focused and that is why I'm going to test it out it's going to be my main driver from now on and um, yeah there is a couple of different things I have to tell you before we are going on here because I have a very special system set up today otherwise I couldn't show you what's going on on the smartphone because there is no continuum feature or something on the smartphone available. Uh, Ubuntu Touch would have those but the problem is Ubuntu Touch can't for instance use those Android apps. I'm going to tell you more about that in a couple of seconds or minutes. And um, yeah, what is going on here is I am using Windows 10 Mobile on my, on my uh, Lumia XL, um, 950XL in this case, um, which is going to project you everything that is shown on the screen. But since the desktop, the uh, Edge browser on the Lumia 950XL is too old now, I can't use a feature we need to, uh, to um, bring the different informations from the new smartphone, uh, which you can see here. I'm going to show you later on how it's looking. This is the smartphone we are going to use here. Um, to uh, run Selfish OS on. And uh, the thing is that we need Screencast, which is a technology, um, uh, to, uh, to see something on a big screen like this. And so we need a more modern browser. How to do that? We are going to use TeamViewer on our smartphone here, so the Windows 10 mobile smartphone in this case, to access the desktop PC I'm running uh, over there. And on that desktop you can see I have the newest version of Firefox installed and with that we can see everything. And if you are for instance using the newest version of Edge on your, uh, your PC or something, that would work too. It's just about the version of Edge which is running on this system, on Windows 10 Mobile at the, at the moment. That one is just too old, it can't use this technology. Um, the technology is a little bit laggy, just to let you know, so um, there is going to be a delay um, on it because we are of course using TeamViewer to access everything first off, so it has a delay and there is a delay for screen, uh, screen testing. Screen testing is more or less um, taking screenshots of the, of the smartphone display constantly and bringing that to a network address so we can access it for instance with a PC or whatever uh, is on the network and uh, in the browser in this case. And um, so we are going to have a little bit of a lag there, but uh, considering what we're doing here, I think the lag is pretty bearable. But let's see what's going on here. Okay, so first off, as I mentioned before, I am running TeamViewer. So I'm going to go in there and show you what's going on. This part, I'm going to move that to the side because this is put there by TeamViewer and we're going to get rid of that too. And now you can already see this is the smartphone screen of Sailfish OS. And um, yeah, just to show you what, uh, which kind of uh, smartphone you are going to see here, this is my daily driver now. It's the Sony Xperia 10 II, a pretty new smartphone, I think it's from last year or something, um, by Sony in this case. 
and this one can run um, Sailfish OS on it. Um, there are a couple of different um, limitations which, uh, which smartphones can run Sailfish OS. Um, in the end, there are community ports for the Sailfish OS uh, operation system and there are the official ones. This one is officially supported by Yola. Yola is a, is a um, creator of Sailfish OS. I'm going to show you that. Give me one second here. Um, so Sailfish OS is this smartphone uh, operation system built on for privacy as you can see so it's really focused on privacy matters and stuff like that so nobody is going to try to spy on you and do stuff with you that you don't want uh, uh, the smartphone to do um, it is mainly used by different um, by different governments on the world um, who are going to try to uh, go in a very high privacy state and of course don't want to be spied out from the American or the NSA or something. So they are going to use something that, like Sailfish OS. Um, Sailfish OS is based, or better to say Yola is a, is a creator of Sailfish OS, which is a Bu European company in, the fin in Finland. And um, Finland is more or less um, or better to say, Yola LT is more or less based or created or was built by or founded by the, some of the, the um, employees or former employees of Microsoft um, at Nokia. So Nokia, um, Nokia employees are, are running this business now and it's a very, very nice little smartphone OS. Um, Selfish OS 4.1 was released, I think, end of May, if I'm not wrong. And um, so, at this point, this is a pretty new version of, of the Selfish OS. As you can see, there are a couple of different uh, informations on the website by, uh, uh, of Yola there, um, showing you, for instance, which, uh, which uh, kind of security methods are going to be. The system D sandbox means that everything is more or less in this part. The whole system in, is encrypted by itself, so you can't really access any kind of data on it if you are not going to have a special key for it and stuff like that. And um, of course, there are a couple of different other other um, parts here available. I'm not going to go too deep into that. Um, if you are interested in it, just ask me in the, in the commentary section, for instance. I'm trying to give you any kind of information about that. But um, in the end, uh, the greatest thing or the interesting thing is really that you can run those Android apps. So if we are going to go down, 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 give me one second, somewhere it is written. Um, there are of course native apps for the smartphone and there is these Android apps. And the interesting thing is that the Android ecosystem can be uh, used here with Android 10. So on the level on Android 10, pretty new then. And, um, the most interesting part about it is that this is really running in a sandbox and Android can't access any kind of, of system data uh, by itself. So you have to provide system data to it if you really need to give it and um, give it access to it. And Android or any kind of Android app can't really access anything without asking you about it. And this is more or less very, very important. Um, yeah, I know some kind of Android uh, uh, systems or Android OSs at least pretend to have something like that, but um, I think that with Google being one of the most extensive data miner, so people who are selling data for, uh, from their users, um, letting them decide to uh, which kind of data is going to be transferred and stuff like that is more or less like giving a prisoner the key and telling him, yeah, please stay in the, in the cell don't go out and nobody is watching him and all that. So in the end, having somebody else like the Linux system here, um, watching what is going on there is much more secure if you ask me. Okay, um, yeah, and in the end, there are a couple of different other options here. So uh, if you are interested in that, please have a look at it. Um, it's an open source based system um, with the exception of the interface as mentioned before. And um, there are many, many different options here which you can, uh, can use. And the most interesting part is the big developer community because um, it's not only the Sailfish OS community which is going to support you with, with different updates and stuff like that, but the whole Linux uh, community, or better to say, 
for instance, if you are using Lineage OS or you are using other, other kind of OS forms there, you are going to be able to use some of the, uh, the development done there because in the end um, you can run Android apps, APK, APKs in this case, in the system seamlessly. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different things from that later on, but first off let's have a look at um, the other one. If you yeah, how to get something like the, uh, the Sony Xperia 10 II with Sailfish OS? Um, there are a couple of different options. You can do it by yourself. I did it by myself. I installed Sailfish OS. Um, for that, you have first uh, you have to go to Safe uh, so to the Yola store first. Um, buy Sailfish OS. It's it's um, going to cost you 49 euros if you want Android support and enterprise features. If you don't need that, you can just uh, download it for free. But if you need Android support and stuff like that, you need these uh, 49 euros one-time pay. So there's no no kind of subscription fee or something involved. It's really one-time paid, then it's yours and you can use it as you want to. Um, yeah. And uh, if you did that, then you can. Uh, then there are a couple of different steps you have to go through. There's a there's an introduction menu for that, which is very very easy to follow and very very helpful. And uh, after that, you are going to unlock your smartphone, install uh, the Selfish OS part on it, and then it's going to work. Or if you don't want to do that because yeah, you are just not that, that into the technique about it and it's just too much for you, you can go to, for instance, the JD store and um, here you can, uh, can buy this kind of stuff pre-built more or less. So, and as you can see, um, yeah, it, it ranges a little bit, but in the end, um, the, the smartphone itself costs something like 360, 350 euros or something, and um, to buy by itself. And if you are going to uh, to want to get the, the version with Android support, you are going to uh, to um, get it here for at about 400 euros. Um, the smartphone itself is worth to 360 to 380 euros. It depends. And um, so. Depending on what you want here, you can buy the one with only Yolla, uh, with only the free version installed, or you can buy the one with Android support installed in this case, and you get everything pre-installed for you and you can run with it. Um, yeah, so it's up to you what you want to do there, but it's a little bit more of a hassle to get the smartphone than just going to a media market or something or your, your local electronics store and just asking them. They are not going to be able to help you. But there are a couple of different um, smartphones which are uh, supported and this is one of them. And this is one of the newest ones, so if you want to get yeah, a, pretty, a pretty new mid-range hardware, so it's not, not uh, high-end or something, but it's mid-range and it's more than enough to give you a very great experience um, with Selfish OS, because Selfish OS is very, very lightweight, so um, it's really, really running very smoothly on this kind of hardware, and um, you really have a great experience with that, even with Android uh, apps. So the Android apps are not very limited or are going to be much slower than their counterparts on a yeah, native Android smartphone. Um, so it's really a nice experience. You can even play games and 3D games and stuff like that on this with a pretty nice FPS. I'm going to show you something about that later. Okay, so let's have a look at um, the smartphone itself. So I think I talked enough and we can have a look at this. This is going to be reflecting my smartphone screen as you can see. Um, I just put it in. This is a, a screencast a technology which is going to be used here. I'm going to um, get rid of the status bar there and I'm going to move around for you so you can watch with me what I'm doing here on this Part. And as you can see, this is more or less the unlocker part there. Let's see where I can put that. I think something like that should be okay. Um, as mentioned before, there is going to be a lag in this. This is normal and this doesn't have anything to do with the smartphone itself. The smartphone itself is running very fast. It's just that I am projecting everything over and over again. And um, so, as mentioned before, this is just going to be like it can be seen here. Okay, so first off, there should be... 
Yeah, okay, there is a fingerprinter at this point available at the smartphone. The problem about that is that at the moment I, um, I just put in a lot of different um, fingerprints and those could not be, be seen here. So let's put in the, my pin in this case. I'm going to, of course, cut here if I'm going to see that on the screen. Here. And here we go. We have unlocked it now. And as you can see, this is more or less the start screen of this smartphone. And the most interesting part about that is that you don't see anything more or less. Um, it's not locked at the moment. So the smartphone itself is more or less navigated through with um, yeah, swipe gestures and stuff like that. So swiping is very, very important on the Sailfish OS in this case. Um, as you can see, you already saw that there was this little little slider down here when we started this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide up and as you can see, there we are. We have all the different apps installed on the smartphone at the moment and sliding down again will of course get rid of that. And um, yeah, now there is a very interesting feature about the smartphone because you can really easily use this which is a very long format if you have a look at that. Um, but you can very easily use this with one hand only. So you don't have to go up there, for instance. So up there and, and swipe down at this point or something. You can do that anywhere on the screen. That means if you do it here, you can already see there's this action center, which is going to give you a couple of different things. For instance, up there, those are more or less experiences. I'm not sure what they are called at the moment. It's just more or less like a smartphone scene. So if you want to have a different background a color and, and uh, yeah, colors in, and of course a background image and stuff like that, you can change that there. As you can see, I have my own uh, Moana or Waiana, depends on where you are from, um, background here. But in the end, you can create your own ones and swipe them through here. You see there are a couple of different ones at the uh, top there. And I already did some uh, by myself. Some are pre-installed, of course. Um, for instance, I can go to Harmony. Why not? Give it a sec. And now, as you can see, we got the new one. And um, this means that there are uh, different colors involved too. Um, and of course, there is this new background image and stuff like that. And there are a couple of different ones available here too. So if you want to do something else, let's go to this um, river in this case. It takes one or two seconds and then, as you can see, we have a new one there with different kinds of, of highlight colors more or less going on here and a couple of different things. As you can see, swiping from the right is going to open up the different um, notifications in this case. And um, at the moment I don't have any new ones, but in the end this is more or less what the smartphone OS is all about. I'm going to change it back to one of my own, where was it, Moana Dark. That's my smartphone OS background and uh, experience more or less. And um, yeah, in the end, as you can see, this is more or less what the smartphone OS is all about, all the different swipe gestures. And interestingly enough, there is, for instance, in many of those applications, no, um, what, yeah, no three dot menu, for instance, and there's no hamburger menu. I'm not sure, even sure if that is called in English the same. So the three um, lines be below each other, which is going to open menus and stuff like that, isn't really a thing on Sailfish OS itself. Um, in some of the apps, you can already see here, here a couple of apps I mean, have installed. Um, in some of the apps, if they are going to come from Android, there is going to be a, this kind of menu, but in the, in the system apps itself, you're not going to find them. So native apps uh, from Linux, or better to say from Sailfish OS, are not going to use this kind of feature. They are using something different, and I'm going to go, for instance, for, to the settings part here. And let's see if I can change something here. I'm not sure if we can see it. Yeah, for instance, here is one of those swiping through the different um, parts here. So at the top, you can see system, for instance, is going to be shown there. And of course, apps is going to be shown there. And um, I can just swipe through those different tab-based informations, more or less, like, for instance, in um, Windows 10 Mobile and Windows 8.1 Mobile. 
uh, or Windows Mobile 8.1 or Windows Phone 8.1, better to say, um, you could do that too. So as you can see, you are going to be familiar with a couple of different things and there are a couple of different things which are not familiar for you. For instance, how can I go back to the start screen in this case? It's a problem, right? There are no buttons available and uh, pressing that one, so the, the menu, the main button more or less will um, in the end just bring you back to the, to the um, lock screen and stuff like that, so that's not going to be the case. What you can do in this smartphone OS is swiping from the outer space, so really out of the border there, to the inner one, and then you are going to go to, back to the start uh, screen and you can work with it now. For instance, click long on it and get rid of the setting. It's pretty interesting that it's done like that, but it's very, very convenient if you are going to be uh, get used to it, um, because you really can do everything just with your thumb. You don't have to use much more your, your other fingers here, and you just can use your thumb to do stuff like that. Um, other thing, for instance, which is which I'm already mentioned, is for instance this um, this menu part. So if you want to get rid of, for instance, a hamburger menu or something, um, let's see what I can show you there. Let's go to I don't know. Let's just use a clock here. So something like like. Uh, um, some kind of notifications, timers and stuff like that, you can set them up here. And if I, for instance, go to this one, nach unten ziehen, um timer zu speichern. This means just um, to, to swipe down to save a timer. And this is indicated by this bright highlight color at the top there. So there's this bright li um, line there that is indicating that there's a menu up there. And the menu can be accessed by just pressing on the screen somewhere, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be up there, draw, um, drawing it down, and now you can more or less go through the different entries in this menu up there, as you can see, with just going to that, and if you, for instance, want to create a new one, just leave it there. Now it's going to blink to, uh, to tell you it's selected, and now you can, for instance, set your timer up, whatever you want to have there, something like that for instance, and if you are ready, just click on, on save in this case, and the timer is there and you can use it. And of course, if you for instance want to reset them, there is a new option available there, you just go to that one and reset it like that. Um, if you want to delete it, you have to press long on this and do that for it in this case. Um, so there are a couple of very, very interesting um, usages or, or GUI situations in here, so um, I don't know everything at the moment till now uh, too, but it's a really interesting smartphone rest and um, I would say I will um, tell you more about that in future videos. Um, yeah, what can I say? As you can see, the great thing about the smartphone OS is of course we have a couple of different messengers again, so we can use Skype because Skype is available at, uh, from Android, of course. We can use WhatsApp, Android version in this case. Fernschreiber is, uh, is a Telegram, um, a very full-featured Telegram client, which is natively created for Linux, or uh, for Sailfish OS, better to say. Streamer is a, is a other uh, messenger from Android, and because all of those are available on Android, we can really easily use them uh, on the smartphone too. And you won't really see any kind of difference. Um, Discord uh, is for instance the Android app again. Whisperfish is a native client for Signal in this case and there are a couple of different more. So if you for instance are into Matrix for instance as a, as a messenger service or something, that one is available too and there are a lot of different other ones too. And um, one of the interesting parts about the smartphone is that there are a couple of different um, different stores available. So there's this Yoda store. This is the official one for Selfish OS. Then there is Storeman, which is an, uh, based on open reps, which is the open source um, repository for different Linux uh, uh, distributions. And one of them is Selfish OS. So they are actively developed uh, parts uh, for Selfish OS. Aptorit is more or less uh, the, um, the store you are going to use if you want to um, get Android apps. 
um, at least a couple of them. You can go to, uh, to Aurora for instance, it's a, a different store too. Aurora is more or less accessing the real Google Play Store but with anonymized features so um, the Google Play Store doesn't know who you are. So you can even go to the real Google Play Store to use them. Um, Streamer of course, uh, sorry, Asteroid is, is something open source again and so you can go to very different uh, different places to get everything. What you can't install so that is very important to to know or at least there are ways around everything but um, in the end um, what you can't install in a very easy way are Google apps by themselves. I don't like Google and I don't want them to spy on me so I'm going to use them anyway but if you want to, to get those kind of apps, so something like, let's say, a native YouTube app, there are a couple of, of non-native ones, but if you want, need that or want that, then you would have to go to the Google Store. And there is one option to do uh, something like that, so run something like uh, Google services on this smartphone too, which is called G Suite, I think. G Suite is an open source alternative to the Google um, RPE is more or less, so if Google has some kind of services, G Suite is going to simulate that and more or less is going to try to yeah, catch every, every request that is sent by an app and try to give them some kind of information, but um, it's not going to send that to Google itself. So a great situation there too, if you need to, to use something that really needs uh, the Google services, you should be able to run that too. And then there are a couple of apps which really depend on Google services um, and those can't be run. But most of the, of the um, Android apps are available on the smartphone. As you can already see, we have all the different uh, messengers and that are just a couple of them. I'm just using those and there are more and more coming all over again. And um, especially with UI, which was banned by the uh, American uh, government uh, before. Um, since that has happened, there are even more applications available freely on the market so everybody can install them, even so they don't have access to the Google market. Yeah, um, what can I say more about this? There are really, really many, many things I can tell you about, but let's have a look at, for instance, one of the games. As you can see, we have this gaming part there. It's called Spiele for me. And if I click on that, you can see this was more or less a folder and there is for instance a small little 3D game named Omnom Run. Omnom was that little guy where you had to feed him by more or less cutting through rapes or ropes um, so that for instance fruit is going to fall down to him and he can eat it. And um, I just want to show you the performance of this app for instance. Even so, we are running different stuff here, just to show you that you really don't have to expect a very low um, performance or something from Android apps in this case. Because everything else, something like WhatsApp or something, is really going to run flawlessly. But uh, just to show you that even games like this run pretty nicely, I am going to show you that on the screen itself. If I'm going to show it to you here, then it's going to lag a lot. But just to let you see what's going on there, I'm to, going to turn around again and I'm going to activate nom nom in this case. Okay, so as mentioned before, you're going to see a big lag on the Septo Lab or on the big screen here, but on this screen you should see that it's pretty easy working. And as you can see, we can now just navigate through that and it's going to be pretty, pretty performant. It's one of those runner games where you are going to just run around and then you're just switching the lanes in this case. And you are run, uh, jumping up and stuff like that, having to go to some kind of uh, parts here. But you can already see it's pretty native technology or, or um, speed in this case and it's even not yet the fastest one you can get here because I'm already doing the screening stuff so if I'm going to get rid of okay um, if I'm going to get rid of uh, that too it's even faster so 
you really don't have to uh, think about anything. It's really running great in this case, and you shouldn't be concerned about this part. And of course, there are a couple of different other um, games and options available here, which are even faster for that. So, just to let you know, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, interestingly enough, this is a dual SIM system. So, um, my smartphone has dual SIM installed. You can use that too if you want to. And um, there are a couple of other things around that. I'm not going to be able to show you everything in this video, otherwise, we are going to talk for hours now. And um, so, I hope you had fun with it. If you have any kind of questions about something like that, please let me down, know down below in the commentary section, of course. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to, to know more about all this, please let me know because I'm trying to create a couple of different videos around Selfish OS in the following episodes, of course, or at least um, in the next special episodes. And um, yeah, other than that, I'm going to use this now as my main driver, as you can see. Didn't tell you about that neither. This is a, a smartphone which has three camera lenses and it can be used. So there is a, tele, uh, a zoom uh, lens in here, there is a normal lens, and there is a widescreen lens or a widescreen lens available. So you can even do something like that with it. And there are really, really many, many different options here. Um, just to let you know, the camera isn't on par, at least one of them, if you combine them all together, then there's more power in this. But the camera itself is not on par with the Lumia 950 XL um, because even today the Lumia 950 XL has one of the best cameras available on the market. It's just like that. And um, yeah, but still, this is a very, very nice mid range camera. You can use it for any kind of still shots and so on. And it's really, really nicely done. And yeah, I would say let's keep it with that. I hope you had fun watching and um, please let me know anything you want to know in the commentary section down below. Other than that, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, see you in the next episode, subscribe if you didn't until now and other than that, thank you for watching, see you, stay healthy and bye! bye.